On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, Keith and I get into the season-ending injury for number two overall pick for the Oklahoma City Thunder, Chet Holmgren, sustained in a summer league game. Does this change the mindset of NBA players? We'll decide next. We'll talk about it next right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you are Locked On 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host and partners always from TheInquire.com. Fantastic Sixers beat writer that he is, Keith Pompey. What's up, Keith? What's poppin', D? How you been? Uh, good Thursday, man. We're towards the end of the week. Everybody seems pretty good, so no complaints on this end. Yeah, yeah, I can't complain even. And plus, if you complain, who's going to listen, right? Uh, well, I would listen, but I don't know if I would have a solution for it at the end. But, yeah, I would listen. But, you know, okay. yeah, but I understand. Thanks for making everybody uh, Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76ers is free. And available wherever you do get your podcast, like right here on YouTube, Locked On 76ers. Keith, we got to talk about Chet Holmgren and his season ending injury and why that could put a little pause in the summer league basketball, or maybe not in the future. Also, we have to dive into Patrick Beverly, a Sixers fan favorite. Many Sixers fans are wanting him to come to Philadelphia some one way or another, seems to be on the move yet again. And finally, joint practices in the NFL. Maybe a wrinkle for the NBA? Talk about that later in the podcast. But, Keith, let's start with the Chet Holmgren news. Uh, tough, uh, sad news for the number two overall pick. Already questions about him because of his uh, his body type and what type of success would he be able to have on the, on the NBA level as a big man in the NBA. Skilled, but still small, and you know they're going to try to find him on switches. But seemed to have got himself caught in the Jamal Crawford Summer League on a fast break against LeBron James, who we know uh, this physical specimen, puts his body into Chep Holmgren uh, based on the video that we've seen, uh, falls or moves awkwardly backwards as LeBron is putting his body into him. And he seemed to then pause mm, a couple of steps away from uh, the, in the uh, baseline where he had to pause, bend over and grab at his ankle. And now the news comes out that he has a Liz Frank injury and will miss the entire season. Will this now give NBA players pause, or more importantly, will NBA teams try to ask their players to limit their play in the summer league? Because he was playing in the entire Jamal Crawford, Jay Crossover summer league until that last game, which I don't know how many more games there were, but he was fine all year, all, all summer, and then this happens. Yeah, I, I, I think that will um, create some pause. And, and the reason being is like, you know, the one thing that, you know, when people from the outside looking in, you'll say, OK, that was a move to the basket by LeBron James. But the conditions on that day were horrible. Um, and, and again, I'm not coming down on Jamal or anything like that. But if, if you I mean, I, I was watching the game and I saw that play. But throughout the whole time, they had people with towels getting condensation off the floor. I feel like they shouldn't have played that game at all. And um you know, we talked about this before, and I praise Jamal for everything he does for the people in Seattle. But, you know, you question how much did the condensation on the floor contribute to that injury? You know, and the fact is, you know, everybody wanted to make people happy, so the show must go on. But, you know, he wasn't the only person that got hurt either. So to me, when you look at it, yes, if they were playing just a regular pickup game, if this was anywhere else and all the conditions were were great, you will say to yourself, hey, nothing wrong. Freak accident, accidents happen. But when you're having a pickup game and there's or you're having this type of game and there's condensation on the floor and this wasn't the only injury and they ended up canceling the game anyway, I think there is going to be some pause now because like. It's going to, there's going to be some pause because these players are under contract. And now you got this the second overall pick. 
missing the entire season. So I think so. I think, yeah, there's going to be some pause. Well, the the other part here is, you know, all kidding aside, you know, uh, with Sam Presti and the way that they've been going about their, their rebuild and the tanking, if you will, and losing a lot of games, trying to get these high picks and, and find that, that one star that will eventually put them over the top to go with their group as they build. Um, they're going to, it's going to be that way again now that he's going to be out. So, but you have to imagine that they really wanted to see this young guy build up his body and, and allow him to go out there and perform and show what he has, show them what he has. So they'll know for a fact what they have going forward in the future. But I don't think it puts much pause in, in a lot of players because they feel like this is a way for them, you know, to go out there, compete against their peers, have a little fun and, and get better and, along with the pickups too. Now, Maybe some things should have been done differently with that particular day, since you said there were so many people in there. It was hot. The condensation that was there made the floor unplayable, which is why they put they canceled the game. Maybe it should have been done sooner, but uh, I really don't think it's going to change much. Uh, they've been doing this for years, uh, playing outside Rucker League, you know, Rucker basketball in New York uh, on the uh, on the blacktop. They've been doing this stuff for years, so I really don't think it's going to change much for players. Team may, teams may ask, and they may speak to the agents and speak to the players and try to do so. Don't know that they can put that language in the contract outside of you know, some other things where we've seen motorcycles, right? Uh, those types of vehicles that they would ask players to stay away from during their professional careers. I don't think it will really change much. This was one of those deals where you know what you get, you know what the possibilities are when you're playing basketball, and I think that's how it's going to be. I do. Yeah, the problem is, though, D, is that that game should have never been played. Like, I mean, it was, you know, it was to like players were in the players were in uh, warm ups. Well, not even warm ups. I'm just saying that the conditions in that arena at that on that particular time, they were they were far below NBA standards. They were far below what you want a high school kid playing on. See, the thing is, remember when several years ago when the Sixers had condensation on their floor and they tried to get everything cleaned up and they ended up basically canceling the game. It was against the Memphis. I believe it was Sacramento. The Sacramento. Yeah, Sacramento. Them do, they was like, nah, we ain't playing. We just not playing. And they rescheduled. The same thing should have happened here. You know I what agree. I mean? And, and I feel like I you know, if, you, if you go somewhere and you say, okay, hey, this is what we're going to do. But you got to understand, man, it's like you got a lot of people in those programs that want to see people play. Especially LeBron James there. Especially and LeBron. If you're going to reschedule LeBron James. You got to take him exactly. when he's available. <laughs> right? Exactly. So it becomes that pressure to play. And they shouldn't have played that game, man, because, you know, we're talking about him and, and the other one. So here's my thing. There are going to be certain people that you're going to say, OK, let's police this situation. We know that they're not going to play it. We know. But you but you can't do everything by a, is you want to do everything by a case by case. But there's always going to be that example where some people are like, nah, we want to get it going. We want to get the game going. And and I, I I think I get what you're saying, but I think that this right here is going to change it. I think that people are going to be like, I don't want my guy doing it. We got too many investments, especially another one, a number one, a, a, a top draft pick. A but why? Two. But why is it different when you just have an organized pickup? Yes, there there will be guys who say, you know what? Hey guys, this floor maybe too too slick. But then there will be the other ones who say, it's cool. We'll play through it. And and if it happens, it happens. Well, I think it's a little bit different. I, I think we've both been in those positions where we've been in, you know, unfavorable situations there as far as the conditions of the basketball floor and the conditions of the playing field in general. And we all believe it's not going to be me. Okay. And that happened in a regular pickup game, too. Yeah, right, exa- yeah but I, I kind of also feel like when they have these organized pickups, like, for instance, they have an organized pickup. Um, they have an organized pickup that they have those open runs they have at UCLA. Yes. Well, the people running it 
are also affiliated with NBA teams. You understand what I'm saying? So they go through the NBA protocols. Let's just say the Phoenix Suns, your cousin, and um, are doing a pickup game at, at, at in Phoenix. Well, you best believe that there's somebody from the Phoenix Suns training staff is at that thing, or they having open runs at the facility. So you understand what I'm saying? So I feel like I feel like the precautions when they have their open runs, the precautions are are there, and they have people you know in place to make sure everything is okay. You know the problem with that one is not only did they have they didn't have condensation on the on, on the in the in the stands. If I mean on the on the condensation on the floor, if you notice when LeBron James came in. People were just walking on the floor. You're like, where's the security? Right. LeBron was in the layup line at one point, and he did a slam dunk. The dude walked on the floor and tried to give him a high five, and security came in. Yeah. Yo, they came out. They came from all over, like this swarm, swarm, swarm. So to me, I look at it like, yo, people here are excited to see LeBron, right? They, they, they don't have an NBA team. LeBron's the best player in the world. They're excited to see him. NBA executives is looking at it like, yo, man, what's up with the security? Like, what happens if something, if a fight broke out? I got, you know, I got a guy who just signed for $98 million. You know what I mean? Like, that's a major investment. What happens if Chet got stampeded? What happens is this and that? So you understand, that's why I'm saying, you know, it's one of these things where they're looking at it like, yo, this is crazy, you know? So that's where I'm coming from. That's where I'm coming from. And and again, I'm just playing the other side. I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you one bit, uh, but it's going to be something to watch for next summer. And then when these things are going, going on, you're right. At these other pickup games, UCLA and other places, Yes, they have these these players, these people who run those those open runs where I think they would be more uh, responsible in, in that way and saying, hey, we, we got to shut this down. This is not not today. We, we'll, we'll regroup tomorrow. We'll get this all situated. We'll be back tomorrow. So, yeah, I understand. Uh, on the other side, Keith, we need to talk about a Sixer fan favorite as they've always tried to look for that backup point guard that they trusted, that dog. And uh, one, and Patrick Beverly looks like he's headed to the Los Angeles Lakers via trade. We'll talk about it on the other side, the trade itself. And I'm sure a lot of Sixer fans will not be happy with this one. Do that next right here. Locked on 76ers. But first, I need to tell you guys about NHTSA. Got to drive sober. huh? You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes too many. And as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. But nah you live nearby no big deal you can make it home okay right well what are the odds that you will get pulled over anyway and even so what's the worst that could happen your insurance goes up you lose your license you lose your job you total your car you kill someone everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk the results are tragic and often deadly and however that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence that's why officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives i was driving home one late night and i was pulled over they were having their checkpoints i was cool because i don't drink but again they are out there and they're doing this to, for the safety of you and your loved ones so if you think you're okay to drive there for a few drinks think again play it safe plan ahead get a ride it only takes one mistake to change your life and someone else's life forever drive sober or get pulled over do it today people make sure you do it today Better do it today. <laughs> all right we all want to get home safely or wherever our destination is we all want to get there thank you for making locked on 76 as your first listen for your next check out the locked on now podcast nightly recaps of every nba game wnba with analysis from our local experts on an injury like Chet Holmgren. Uh, it's free and available wherever you get your podcast. All right, Keith, we need to talk about Pat Beverly. Looks like he's going to the Los Angeles Lakers after being traded from Minnesota earlier in the summer to the Utah Jazz. They're rebuilding, it seems. 
Now he's being sent to the Los Angeles Lakers for Taylor Horton Tucker and Stanley Johnson. And a lot of Sixer fans, man, they 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 have been wanting Patrick Beverly for years. Now, what do you would would, would he have benefit benefited being on this basketball team, Patrick Beverly? Was that something that the Sixers should have looked into, or are they fine right now with their guard rotation currently? You know, I don't know if they could have afforded them. I mean, you know, right now, $10 million dollars. I think he, uh, huh? I think he got a ten million dollar extension. Yeah, I mean, my thing is like, yeah, ten million dollar extension. It's like, who are you going to trade them for, right? I mean, if you were going to do it, um, and and what Utah basically want, you know, maybe you could have got a, you know got included him in a package if you were in for the uh, uh, Donovan Mitchell. Well, now nah, he couldn't be included in a package because they just traded him. Mm-hmm. Um, but acquired him, but but you know I, I just didn't think the Sixers had money. Now here's the thing about Pat Bev. From a mentality standpoint, as far as being like that rugged dog, no back down, a guy that's going to get under people's skin. Yeah, I like him a lot. I do. You know, I I do. I, I think that he would have helped the locker room a lot. He's also someone who's extremely loyal to teammates, and you know he's a guy who played with James Harden played with like Tucker and um but he also played with um he, he also played with Tobias Harris right so he would have worked out now but um but 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 you have to ask yourself like I think the Sixers should have went after him a couple of years ago but he wanted to get paid but you you should ask yourself like you know who are we going to give up and and who were another team going to take and, and, you know, before we talked about this, I'm going to let you go into it, but you kind of swayed me a little bit, you know, when you were talking about the Anthony Melton. So, you know, he's a younger guy. He, he, he's yeah. not as vocal, like all up in your face and this and that, but he might be a more complete player than uh, Pat Bev is at this particular time. Yeah, he's younger. Um, they cost around the same uh, as far as money goes, but – he, he brings a little bit more overall with his game offensively. And he might be just as good defensively. It, he doesn't come with the hype and that all the, the barking that Patrick Beverly does, which a lot of people want. And I, would have, I wouldn't have been mad if the Sixers acquired Patrick Beverly either. I wanted him in the trade coming from uh, the Los Angeles Clippers when Tobias Harris was acquired a few, years, a few seasons back. So uh, I like Patrick Beverly, but I do think right now, I would put De'Anthony Melton as far as a backup guard goes because I don't think Patrick Beverly is a starter, even though it was necessary for that Minnesota, that young team, for him to start with D'Angelo Russell uh, quite a bit. It wouldn't have been the case here, and I think Melton is a much better player for this basketball team in this moment going forward with what he's able to do. His outside shooting has improved. His offensive game in general is is, is a little bit better than Patrick Beverly, and defensively, he he is a problem for a lot of those guys out there. So. Uh, it, it just doesn't come with a lot more of that, you know, that that bravado that goes along uh, with with Patrick Beverly. So good move for the Lakers. Uh, Taylor Horton Tucker is a player that just hasn't seemed to reach the potential that they thought. I don't know what they thought, but they paid him handsomely out there in L.A. to, to, to reach some sort of plateau that he has not reached as of yet. And the rest of the league is not really on board with it, although. Utah is going to take a chance here and see what they can get or maybe flip them another time. But a uh, good move for the Lakers to bring in Patrick Beverly. How are he and Russell Westbrook going to get along? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. It, it's going to work out. Hey, But, you know, the one thing that I will say is, isn't it funny how things work out? Because, remember, before, this, this, the Lakers did not want to part ways with Tucker at yep. all like even like nah we're not getting rid of him was that, was that more of a clutch thing than it was a laker thing it, it, it was too but i think they also felt like they also felt like he had a huge upside too and it could have been the clutch thing but mm-hmm. here's the thing that one thing that we're talking about with the sixers and i know we get, get got to get ready to go to the next segment but the funny thing about the sixers is like you know right now you know yes pat people are upset about pat bev not uh becoming a sixer but at the same time you know, the Sixers right now, they need a backup center. And they also need a knockdown shooter. Like, we know they got some 3 and Ds, but they also need a guy who can just come in off the bench and just drain threes like a, a specialist. And, you know. Huh? 
George Nye. Yeah, I mean, but you know, you can all. I'm talking about someone from the guard spot. The, the problem is, yeah, Isaiah the, Joe does it finally. Yeah, well, hope, the thing hope. is, the, the I like Isaiah Joe, and I, and I love him as a person. Great guy, you know. Uh, I'm I'm a huge fan of Furkan, right? You know, really nice guy. Um, but they need someone that's going to be a little bit more consistent doing that. They need someone that you could go in and you you can depend on them. You know, I know Seth Curry, he had um, the COVID thing and he struggled and people got down on him. But deep down, I mean, this guy is what ranked third all time in three point shooting percentage. So to me, it's kind of like you just need I like these guys they have and it is a big moment for them. But they need somebody that you can go in there and say, OK, I know he's going to knock down a shot. Like when they got when they got um, J.J. Reddick. We knew, oh man, they got yeah, a guy who's going to drain threes. It's, yeah. it's not is he going? If we hope he's going to do it. No, he did it. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. You can just you just need somebody you know consistent. You look at Miami; they got two of them. One of them couldn't even get off the floor. What's the, the dude? Uh, what's his he name? Helped. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't even he couldn't even get in the game, right? But you know he can make a three. So. I'm just saying that's something that they need, somebody that they can depend on, rely on. That's all all right, man. Well, uh, listen, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll we'll find out if they eventually pick up someone. Training camp begins later on in September. But on the other side, Keith, we need to talk about something that we've seen in football the past couple of seasons that uh, I wanted to throw at you, joint practices. Is that something that we want to see in the NBA uh, before the season gets underway? We'll discuss that next in our final segment right here, Locked On 76ers. Yeah, before we talk about that, I want to talk about Bet Online. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lives, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA. NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in game betting, scores, and products, they have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use the mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. Absolutely. Uh, welcome back, Locked On 76ers. That's Keith Pompey. I'm Devon Givens with you here on this Thursday. Keith, the for us locally here in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Miami Dolphins are uh, having their joint practice be, joint practices before their preseason game on Saturday in Miami. Other teams around the NFL are doing the exact same thing. So it had me thinking, man, because we don't see the players anymore, the starters as much more of the players that we'll see during a regular season in these preseason games because they are getting their work done. The coaches are seeing what they need to see in these joint practices. So I, I was wondering, with the NBA and the Sixers, I think only have four preseason games again this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to see like six to eight games. And um, so I, I ask you, man, um, is, is it something that you think – is uh, a pathway for the NBA to look into as a template from the M from the NFL to maybe get into to get their work done, or do you like it as is, where they just have their training camp for about a week, get their first preseason game in, play three more after that, and have that week off before they start the regular season? What do you think? Yeah, you know what I, I think. Like logistically, it, it's kind of tough to do because what you just said is they have a training camp for a week and then they go places, you know, and they are playing games. But you know, it, it's it's weird because the Sixers in between they have some time in between uh, uh, preseason game number two and number three. But you know, I would personally like if it was they had like an open scrimmage. And you know how they give the open scrimmage, and that's kind of like a fan fest, and they really don't do anything. Um, so if you go there for talent to see some evaluate talent is a waste of time. It's more or less to just go there and see your players and get autographs and, and stuff like that. But I would love to see um, the Sixers probably have an open scrimmage or a scrimmage against the New York Knicks. 
you know, like a team that's in close proximity to them, you know what I mean, or the Washington Wizards or something like that. The Knicks and Nets have open runs. I mean, when you think about it, like this happens a lot on a lot of different levels. Like we don't, it's not reported because teams tend to keep it secret, but you always hear of like the math of high school out of DC and they used to make annual trips to Philly and they would play a Philadelphia team and at, at Villanova and they would have like a six quarter type of scrimmage there. Right. Then, and you know, it was to evaluate talent. You hear of college teams doing the same thing where they go to another campus and they'll have a scrimmage, right? So I, I feel like, yeah, I mean, it, it's a good way for a team to say, okay, let me throw Charles Bassey out there. Let me see what he can do against an elite center from another team, see if he can hold his own. Or, or even a backup like Sims from the Knicks where he's really athletic. Exactly. And see how he responds to it. Yeah, exactly. So – so, um, you, you, you know what I mean? So I, I would like to see that. Now, the only thing is, logistically, how is it going to happen? Like, you know, we, we'll, will you send another team? We all know the Sixers are going to Charleston for training camp. Will, will like, the Charlotte Hornets, like, say, you know what? We're going to take a trip. We're going to take a bus ride, or we're going to fly to, 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 uh, to Charleston, and we're going to work out with the, with the Sixers for a day. You know, yeah. things like that. So. Yeah. You know, I, I I think it would be good, but it's just like just just trying to get everybody together and doing, the, um, you know, getting making the, a, a time for it. And and the other thing that I was thinking of with basketball, and I'm not saying it like this is a more physical sport than football because that would be ridiculous to say, but could it get more chippy in a basketball setting? You know what I'm saying? Versus oh, you get chippy. Yeah. Versus, versus the NFL where. They have so many different stations that they do. They have one on ones. They have five on five. They have seven on sevens where, where they're doing these things. And with basketball, you know how certain, you know, how certain chippiness can get to uh, can get to a level uh, versus other sports. And again, I'm not saying it's more physical. I'm just saying it's chippiness in, in general. Yeah, it, it, I can see that happening because that's when like, get that out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Stuff like that, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can see that, but you know what, man? Like, sometimes you need that. Like, I, I hate to say you need to see who's going to be tough, who's going to, like, back the other teammate up. You know what I mean? Like, you know, let's go. Like, we, we you know, like, coaches all say they don't like that type of stuff but because they don't want someone to get hurt. But they also love to see who the leaders are and who the guys are going to, you know, protect guys. So, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I mean – I would lo- look, man. I would love to see that, but again, you are right with the chippiness. But I would love to see guys get after it and do this because you know sometimes you got to be challenged. The problem is, like, if you're Joel and B, mm-hmm. we're going to be one hundred. If you're if you're Joel and B, you're going to training camp right now with the Sixers roster. Who's going to stop you? Nobody. Like you know, you know, nut. You have nobody on that team that That's can true. stop you, huh? No shot. No, no shot. So if you go and you play another team where they got a guy and, and if he may, you know, he's better than your backups, you know, it's going to make you better. It is. It is. It's kind of like, you know, like James Harden. Like, you know, yeah, you got Matisse and guys like that who could guard. But, you know, you get another lockdown, dude. You get this, you get that. I don't know. I think it would just make you make you better. Make you better. Yeah. Yeah. And – um uh, maybe that's why they feel like the preseason games are, are just for that, you know, to, to do something like that. But yeah, man, uh, it was just, just, just a thought, just an observation, uh, watching all these and paying close attention, of course, to the Eagles and their joint practices last week with the Cleveland Browns this week with the Miami Dolphins. Just a thought, just a thought. Hey, thank you, Keith, of course. And thanks everybody for making locked on 76 is your first listen every day. Now make your second listen. Locked on NBA, we're locked on experts are covering the biggest stories around the league every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keith, you might want to uh, might as well let everybody know where they can find us. Like D just said, it's free and available to get the Locked On NBA podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, you can do the same thing for Locked On 76ers. But you can also follow us on the YouTube channel, 
Go to you, go to YouTube, type in locked on 76ers. When you come to our page, you get on there, you see that Liberty Bell, right? Click on that Liberty Bell and you will become a subscriber. Also, from 6 to 10, Monday through Fridays, um, you can go to 97.5 and listen to the Divine Giving Show. Yep, my man got his show. So make sure you, he been had it, but make sure you go there and you listen to the Divine Giving Show. You can also follow D on Divine G975. You can follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers, right? I'm on vacay from uh, the Enquirer right now. I come back to work on the 13th. But make sure you go to Enquirer.com and read our Sixers coverage. As always, man, great to be with you and uh, try to catch up with everybody soon. Thanks, man. Deuces.